Hello everybody and welcome back to another Mitomator tutorial video. Now I know it's been a while since I've done one of these and life has been hectic, so I don't always have the free time to pursue my YouTube hobby. Anyway, let's get started. Let's not dilly-dally around here. Um, this is mostly going to be a, I guess, update video for beta 0.6.2 and I'll try to point out a couple other things that may help out your animating. But anyway, let's get started. And you can find all of these changes in the change list that comes in the folder when you download it. Um, I will just be kind of going off of that, but if you want to look for yourself, feel free to open up that change list. So the first thing to note, let's add a couple things. Uh, scenery. Let's pick a schematic. Schem oh. Schematics. And let's pick a huge tree. Okay, big old tree, and let's give it some movement. And I'm setting this up to show you one of the new features. We're gonna have a move over there. We'll have Senor Steve do the moonwalk back to here. Now, I guess I'll just point this out again, although it's been pointed out in many videos before. To achieve the walking animation, so kind of the shortcut for it if you don't want to do it yourself, you create two different keyframes. There actually doesn't have to be any position change between these two keyframes for it to work, um, but you want to select the first keyframe, right click on it, and click on create walking animation to next keyframe. And depending on your overall tempo, we'll decide how many steps it takes to get there. So just keep that in mind. So now if I press play, We've got a tree and Steve doing the moonwalk. So I actually want to move Steve over here, over here, so we can actually see the two. Yeah, do the moonwalk. Anyway, <laughs> kind of leading into this new feature, if you click on the settings tab, the little wrench up top opens up these extra, um, we'll call them features, over here and you click on performance, it's now going to show you where you're getting some frame rate drops and lag, some lag from. So let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. And yes, I can. So when I press play, you can see at about right here, I'm getting 40%. You can't really see it because my mouse is over it, but when you mouse over these different points, you're going to see the different values. Um, so right here, 53% frame rate. Right here, 78% frame rate. So if I turn off the timeline, it's probably about right here that I'm hitting my performance issues. And it even says right here, added character one, added scenery one. That was about right here. Um, loaded huge tree schematic. That dropped my frame rate down to 30%. But once it was loaded, it was fine. And then these initial playthroughs, there's parts in it where I'm hitting a lower frame rate. So that's just something to look for. When you're wondering what's lagging your animation, go ahead and open up this performance tab and just look for the different characteristics um, of what's lagging it. And if you do have a very intense timeline going on, so let me use this wonderful um, <clears throat> import animation. And what this is going to do is it's going to merge the two animations together. Uh, let's go to our animations and let's find one that's got a lot of keyframes in it. Let's go for... Oh, oh man. Uh, I don't even know what walk-on is. I don't even know what half of these are anymore. Doors, falling two, forward test, green screen gun, minor. We'll do the old faithful scaly gun. So you can see there's all these new... Um, things on the timeline. Now say I, I am getting some heavy lag when I do my playback. Let's actually let this play through and let's look at our performance. So this at one point during that playthrough I was at 36 percent. Well actually no that, that's when I added the skeleton and when I played it through I did drop down to 98 percent Okay, oh, I understand now. So, it's it's kind of hard to tell. I'll try to zoom in. When I've got my mouse over a point, 
it brings up the time. So it says 1733.39. That's referring to my time on my machine right now. It's, it's 534, but in military time, that is 1733. Um, so during my playback, so let's go ahead and time this. So 1734. It's almost like, what's it called? An EK, is, is it an EKG machine? It's what tracks the heartbeat of a patient in the hospital. Um, and so it, this registers what times you lagged at, or you had lag spikes. So let me go ahead. Um, it's 17.35. I think it should almost be... All right, let's wait. Okay, it just hit 17.35. We're gonna hit play. We're gonna close this out. And we're gonna see what our frame rate is. So this is a good way to track. All right, we'll pause, open up the old performance. And it doesn't really, oops. I'm not quite sure if there is a way to kind of cycle through this, um, but uh, that's just a good way to, to gauge on what's causing your lag spikes. And say you do have a million things in your timeline, if you're done working on one of these things, go ahead and hide it by clicking this I. That's gonna make it so it's not actually plain and it's going to speed up your frame rate so if i really just wanted to focus on character one and i was being lagged by all these other things i can go ahead and just hide them and now when i press play they're not there anymore so it's just a it, it's just an easy way to reduce lag and that's not really one of the new features but that's something i thought i would point out with all the with hiding things on the timeline um, the next thing is items were updated to 1.4.7, so let's see if we can find some of these changes. You've got your item frame, I know that wasn't 1.4.7. Oh, you've got the firework, let's zoom in on this. Um, let's go ahead and just do a new animation. Alright, add item, add firework. So now you do have the firework in here. Now as far as adding the particle effect you're gonna to have to green screen that in for now until David does add the particles into my animator um, but if you're looking for any of the other particles I did make a particle pack check out episode 20 of the my animator tutorial uh, series it's also the heads and uh, things of that nature so the items have been updated and now one of the useful things if I go ahead and put a keyframe here to open up all the different options here excuse me for manual input you can get a lot closer of a value he's upped the value so instead of putting just 50 I can put 50.50 .50. and if I go into manual input it still shows 50 well it's at 50.5 which is just 50.50 .50 because the zero is dropped so you can put more precise inputs on that. Um, very useful. And always to achieve the uh, manual input, right click on the slider, on these anywhere, and you'll get manual input. So you'll see there that's 1.1.7, so you can get very specific now with what you're trying to do here. And the next thing, um, the, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, for the sliders, if you click on the number here, or the value, it will automatically bring up the manual input. That's just kind of a, a quick quick thing instead of having to right click and go to it. Uh, the wither skeleton, excuse me, the wither has been scaled, oh man, I'm burping, was scaled correctly. So let's go ahead, oops, and change the model to wither, 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 skeleton. So now he is scaled correctly. I don't know how many people actually noticed that, but David did. So now the wither skeleton is scaled correctly. Um, oh, a big update that I know a lot of people are asking for, special block. Um, let's go ahead and pull this up again. Let's look at special block, which is our chest. Let's pull it over. If we select the top of the chest and rotate it open, observe the chest is hollow, meaning you can put items in the chest, you can put people in the chest, you can put heads in the chest, whatever you want to put in the chest, you can put in the chest.
<laughs> anyway, uh, that, that's, a, that's a very nice feature to kind of give it a more realistic sense when he's grabbing things from a chest or throwing something into a chest. Because then you can actually see it in there, see it come out of there. It makes it a lot better for your animations. Um, I know a lot of people were struggling with parenting items to the arms of characters. So let me just go ahead and show you what I mean by this. I'll add an item and I will make it a gold sword. And to parent in the new well, in the um, 0 0.6 rounds or versions, it's actually in the instance tab. And down here you're gonna see a value called lock to parent. So I want to select our item, which is item two, lock to parent. Pick, I believe it's character one, and pick a, a right arm. Now you'll say, well, oops. well, Ski Dude, that didn't parent to his right arm. And essentially it did. You are going to have to move it just a little bit. And this is something that was changed. The lock to lower part, because the arms can bend now, is now a default feature. Before it was actually locking to the upper part of the arm, so it did act a little squirrely when you tried to parent it to the hand. But now since that's default, people do not have to worry about that anymore. So let's go ahead and rotate our sword around. We're actually just going to make this a solid negative 90. I'll tilt it forward just a little bit. And let's move it down into place. The wither is packing. So now when I go to the wither and I select this arm, and I turned up the bending, the sword will stay parented correctly. That's the term we're gonna use, stay parented correctly to the lower part of the arm. So that's just something to be thankful for that it's doing it by itself. And David did change the bending feature just a little bit so that it didn't, so that it looked a little bit smoother of a bend. Um, let's just zoom in here and bend it. To, I don't know, you'd probably have to compare versions, but it just makes it, it it's not going to be smooth like Cinema 4D or things like that, but it does give it a better sense of that because the arm is bending a little further up. Um, let's move on. <laughs> oh yes, the this is also another very, very important update. The Gollum. Let's get the model. Let's pick the golem iron golem and you're going to say well ski dude he looks the same what is this important feature that has been changed and i will say his nose is now a separate item Woo! now i can spin it i can animate it it doesn't have to be its separate own little rig thing i can do whatever i want with it i can make it spin like so i can make it move out Spin and move out. Let's get a side view of this wonderful animation. It's just amazing this. So the nose is now its own separate um, separate entity. So it kind of it makes it so you don't need to use a rig for the nose. However, you still can do that for the eyes. And I know a lot of people have been asking for a tutorial on how to make a rig. I will get to that um, with my busy schedule. I, I kind of have a list of things lined up of what I'm trying to do. And that is on the list and it will get done. Eventually, you just got to be patient with me. Now, some people have been asking, well, why doesn't David make it so the arms can bend in every direction? And, well, yes, that might be a, a cool feature, but it also would kind of make animating a little bit tougher. Um, and I say that because if an arm can bend in every direction, when, when you're doing an animation and say, okay, it's bending to the left, but now I want it to bend to the front, it's going to kind of be a really weird transition. If you do want to have an arm bend in different directions, so the default bend on the golem, let's look at this, is forward. Okay. Roger, Captain. Say I wanted to have it bend the other way. All I need to do, I like to do it before I actually do the bend. So I'll just rotate this out like this and bend. And then it goes, hi. And then say, okay. Want it to bend backwards, all right? Just flip it 180, and now it bends backwards. And that's the same thing for um, for Steve. Let's pull up Steve. Let's move Steve. 
No, let's not move Steve's arm. Let's move all of Steve. Yay! Okay. Uh, let's pick this body part. And so it bends forward. Okay, I want it to bend the other way. Okay, we'll just rotate this. 90 degrees, and I'm just winging it. Um, 90 degrees, okay, now it bends out. Alright, you want it to bend that the other way? Let's turn it all the way around. And you may have to do a little tweaking with your skin, depending on which way you're wanting it to, uh, to bend. But just be thankful they do bend. I mean, come on! <laughs> Anyway, uh, there was a, a small glitch fixed on the alpha. I can't really show you that since it's now fixed. And some other small minor issues and errors that David decided not to list. So, um, yeah, that's essentially the, the video. That's the update. I did go over a couple new things or kind of some tips. Oh, and something I didn't mention in the beta 0.6.1 features video, the undo and redo now work. Happy day. So you can see his arm actually changing positions. It, it works and it doesn't crash and we're all happy. Um, very happy about that. Be thankful. Be thankful. Um, let's see, what else can we hit real quick as a quick tip? Um, Oh, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but you can export screenshots, and I know people have already figured this out because they've been posting them on the MindMeter forums, but if you take a screenshot, you pick where you want to save it, and we'll call it screenshot, voila, mine automatically opens it for me, but uh, yeah, there's your screenshot, it just takes it of what's in the room right here, and uh, you get fancy screenshot, oh, hello, <laughs> that's kind of funny, I'm watching you, anyway, uh, that's the 0.6.2 beta update video. If you're having a problem with MindMeter, go ahead and look through my playlist. I've got over 20 tutorial videos. Um, and those cover most of the problems. And I know rendering is still an issue. If you're having rendering issues, go ahead and open up the settings panel which, by clicking on the little wrench. And there are now three different options for AVI Recorder. Try all three before you report it is not working. Please do that so that we can better help troubleshoot you. So we don't have to not waste our time. So we don't have to tell you, okay, well, go try this when you could have tried this in the first place. And it could have worked. And always a good troubleshooting tip is, did you turn it off and on again? <laughs> so try restarting your computer, doing a fresh install of Minimator. I know it's a hassle, but this is this is a beta version. All the bugs are not worked out. Anyway, whew, I am very long-winded today, and this is Skidoo. This is uh, the beta 0.6.2 update video. Check out my other videos, Minimator, Ski Resort, whatever suits your fancy, whatever blows your skirt up, as Grandma Skidoo would say. Um, and subscribe, like, and comment if you enjoyed this video. And if not, then don't. I'm not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Peace.